Hi everybody, this is Joe Betcher. Today we're going to talk about how to perform an ultrasound guided pericardiosynthesis. This is a follow up video to the excellent video that Michael Culver made on how to diagnose pericardial tamponade. If you haven't watched that video yet, I suggest going and watching that one first. I'll link it into this video here. Let's take a look at this ultrasound. You find yourself with a crashing patient with tamponade and realize you need to perform a pericardiosynthesis. So this brings up two questions. What approach are we going to take and what equipment do we need? For the approach, there's no one perfect answer. It's kind of like asking what's the perfect central line placement site. It really depends on your patient. The parasternal and apical views require less depth to reach the fluid collection, but also raises the risk of coronary artery laceration. Some xiphoid view makes it more likely to puncture the liver, but less likely to hit the coronary arteries. You also need a larger needle for the sub approach. In this patient, he had excellent sub windows, but very poor parasternal and apical views. Therefore, we attempted the sub approach. Here you can see the needle just ready to puncture into the pericardial sac. And on the following clip, we can see the needle actually within the pericardium. Now let's look at the actual pericardiosynthesis kit. When you open it up, you'll find that there's a long catheter to be used as a drain, most likely from your sub-xiphoid approach. There's a shorter catheter. This will be a drain that you'll use in a, a parasternal or an apical approach. You'll find a long needle. This is good for your sub approach. There's several more pieces. You'll find your guide wire, same as you'll find in a central line kit. And then you'll find a Christmas tree attachment, which we typically don't use here. And then the final piece within the kit is a shorter needle used in the apical or, or parasternal approach. I would also grab a syringe. So how do we actually perform this procedure? Let's say we're performing it like from a sub approach, like in the simulation I've set up here. I'm going to advance my needle under ultrasound guidance until I get a return of blood. Then I set the probe down and I'll grab my guide wire. This is very similar to how we place central lines. I'll take my guide wire and I'll feed it through. And once my guide wire is in, I'll take my needle out. I'll then take the drain and I'll place it over the guide wire. Anytime we're performing a pericardiosynthesis, we really should be placing a drain. Because this is useful from both a, a therapeutic and a diagnostic standpoint. If the patient decompensates again after we per perform the procedure, we can eliminate the cause of repeat tamponade by simply drawing blood out of the catheter. You can place a three-way stopcock at the end of the catheter as well here. So you see me finishing up here. I take the catheter, I slide it over the guide wire. You can make a small nick into the skin if you need to as well and place the drain directly into the pericardial sac. All right, that's it. Piece of cake. Thanks for watching, everybody.